Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. If you like this podcast, you will love my new anthology called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids. Check it out, and you'll hear from 49 authors about all sorts of things moms don't have time to do. All the authors have been on this podcast. Also, check out my TikTok, at with Zibby and Tracy, my other podcast, Sex Talk with Zibby and Tracy. Check out Moms Don't Have Time to Write on Medium. And of course, my new publishing company called Zibby Books. And now back to our daily author interview site and a quick hello from some of my kids. Hi. Hi. Hello. Enjoy the show. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you all had a great break. I wanted to let you know about something that I've been talking a lot about on social media at Zibby Owens, which is the hashtag 22 in 22 challenge. We are at Zibby Books. We are encouraging everybody, like all of you, to visit 22 bookstores in 2022. And we're going to provide a whole series of incentives for every five visits, and you'll be entered to win a $500 shopping spree, and you'll get fun things like bookmarks and all the rest. Plus, you'll be part of a great community of people all helping support bookstores, authors, and more. We're really, really excited about it. If you want to join, sign up. You just go to 22in22.net. That's 22in22.net and click I'm in and put your information. And then every time you go to a bookstore, you just quickly go back on the site and click log a bookstore visit. And then we'll be keeping track and we'll be following up with all of your different achievements and awards and everything. So please sign up, spread the word, 22 and 22, get your friends to join and start visiting bookstores and it'll be really fun and exciting. So here's to a wonderful 2022. I'm so excited that you're listening to my podcast and doing all the fun things that I have been trying to bring into the world. So here we go, 2022, hashtag 22 in 22. In honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I am releasing this episode with Brian Collier. He is an, a Caldecott honor winner and has won a bazillion awards. His latest book is called We Shall Overcome and includes powerful, powerful words to which he illustrated just absolutely breathtaking, beautiful drawings, which you'll hear features his daughter. And here's a little bit more about Brian. Brian has loves to paint and has successfully channeled his creative energy and love of art into an illustrious career as a children's book illustrator and writer. He began painting at the age of 15 and eventually landed a scholarship to attend Pratt Institute in New York. He has won four Caldecott honors for Rosa by Nikki Giovanni, Martin's Big Words by Doreen Rappaport, Trombone Shorty by Troy Andrews, and Dave the Potter by Laban Carrick Hill. His first book, Uptown, won the Coretta Scott King Award and the Ezra Jack Keats Award. He has won five more Coretta Scott King Awards and three Coretta Scott King Honors. And by the way, he also illustrated All Because You Matter by Tammy Charles. And I have interviewed Tammy on this podcast, so you might want to go back and listen to that. Anyway, I thought this was a beautiful tribute and belonged on Martin Luther King Day. Enjoy. Welcome, Brian. Thanks so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss We Shall Overcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. This book is unbelievably beautiful. The illustrations are just breathtaking. Tell us, like, how did you decide to do this book? Tell me the whole backstory of it. I'm just so, you know, unbelievably impressed with this, as with all your work, really. Well, thank you. Oh, I was super, super excited to try to tell this well-familiar anthem and song in a way that sort of creates a bridge from its inception and the way it was used through history, through the civil rights movement, and as it pertains to today. So I start with the idea of taking two approaches, paint images in black and white and that will indicate the past, and then in full color, I would paint a little kid walking through history like a timeline, as if it's some sort of time machine that's making all these connections. So the imagery that you see is in both color and black and white. It's beautiful. And I know I was reading about your, you know, your, what's the word, predilection for collage. And, you know, it does seem like so many of these images look as though they had been sort of cut out and pasted on in in a collage-like illustration. Is that, is that the way you went about this? Like, what was the, how did you do this visually? Visually, well, I just, I paint in watercolor. So when you see the, the cutouts, everything is painted. 
you know, basically. And I paint in watercolor. I paint on heavy watercolor paper, like 300 pound watercolor paper. It's not really 300 pounds, but it's the heavy. I know, I know. <laughs> And I use it and I mold it and I, I, I do all kinds of things because I have an affinity for different textures of paper. And I try to use a combination of all those things to sort of build uh, the imagery up. And there's no, I don't have a formula at all. I just go by intuition and sort of try to tell the story, what I want to sort of fall to the background, what I want to zoom forward for the visual eye to see, because all of that is important in the storytelling. And the emphasis and in my intentions when I'm when I'm creating, so all those things sort of come into play when creating. And the imagery itself is, are major landmarks and and historical places in history as the civil rights movement moved through it, and then as it pertains to today as well. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, I had Tammy Charles on my podcast for All Because You Matter. And now I see, now I get to <laughs> talk to the person who made her book so beautiful too. So that's amazing. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> Tammy is so awesome. Yep. Yeah, she really is. You have such a gift. You have such an eye and such a talent. When did you realize this was your calling? I think I was at age 15, actually. I started making art at 15 and I was... I. I was totally in. I was just hooked. And even though I played sports, I was into football and basketball. I played all throughout high school, but it was nothing like making art. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. I didn't have a plan B. All I had was one plan is to be an artist and create and find my way. And I didn't know what that would look like. I just knew that was it. Wow. What position did you play in football? My son plays football now. <laughs> Oh, I was a fullback in on the offense and on defense. I was a defensive end. Nice. He's playing yeah. center. He's playing center right now, but he hates playing center. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, we'll see what happens. He'd like to be a running back, but I don't know. Maybe he's not fast enough. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, oh, I can get back there. Yeah. <laughs> So you discovered this talent. Then I know you had this long career working in Harlem in a nonprofit capacity and really making a difference there. Tell me about tell me about that. Well, it was during my I started during my senior year at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. And I was told to go up to Harlem and check out this art program that would had just started. And and then a lot of when I went up there and I met the kids and we were we were situated in the in the Harlem Hospital. But it's for kids for the community as well, not just in the hospital. So what I did was I knew as soon as I walked in how a lot of answers as an artist for me were there. You know, I have an affinity for making art. I love young people, and I was raised by my grandmother primarily. And so I have a for, the, for older folks as well. So I was bridging those sort of ideas about why I was an artist and, and what is it all for. You know, and what is it all about? So a lot of watching those kids create, and then I was creating myself. A lot of answers were and affirmations were awarded in those moments. Wow, that's and I did it for twelve years. Yeah, and you're still involved, right? Well, I, the program I think is, is no longer in existence, but I was for a lot of years after I left as a consultant to the program. Got it. Wait, so Brian, tell me about the cover for We Shall Overcome and tell me about how in the letters, it's hard to describe this since this is a podcast, but I'm going to give it a shot. So there's this beautiful picture, partially black and white, partially with this new, beautiful little girl with a yellow dress holding a flower with a peace sign on it, a little leaf. And then in big, bold orange letters, it says, We Shall Overcome. But even the letters look a, a bit, you can feel them. They're like raised and they're like, I don't even know how to... It's dead, it's really yeah, really touching. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me about this. I'm assuming you designed the cover as well. So I was, I was in, in on it. There was an art designer at the publisher that pulls it all together. But and my my artistic contribution to it was the black and white imagery in the background is a painting of the 16th Street Baptist Church in um, Birmingham, and there's a statue of Dr. King in the park across the street, yeah. diagonally across the street from that sanctuary and that's a key location because in the during the civil rights movement that is where the children went to the forefront of the movement as a as a strategy 
And there, it was a dark day there when the four little girls, when the church was bombed and the four little girls were killed that day in that sanctuary. So that was a key imagery as we're talking about We Still Overcome. And the little girl, that's my daughter. Her name is Haley. That's my youngest daughter who posed oh, for the book. So She's beautiful. She's standing in a yellow dress with a peace sign. But when you open the book and the first images of her sitting on her bed getting ready for school, there's a peace sign on her bedspread. So she starts in peace and she ends in peace in this book. And that's significant as well as her journey. Because she's the connection. She's the bridge from yesterday to today. Oh, wow. And yeah. when, you, when you read the book, you'll see what she does as she walks through the book, through history, and sees all the, the black and white imagery of the, of the past. But she's, bringing, she's the future. She wow. represents the future. That is yeah. beautiful. I didn't even notice the bedspread. That's how observant I am. Well, oh well. <laughs> well, picture books make you slow down and pay attention to the details. That's the glory and the wonder of picture books. That's so true. I think my kids are probably better at this than I am. So is your daughter like thrilled? <laughs> is she thrilled to have been featured? Or was that did that cause dissension in the ranks? <laughs> no. Listen, she's been in several books as my other daughters have too. So I don't think, you know, they they do it. It's so familiar to them that, you know, it's just another thing. But she gets she gets awakening when her classmates and her librarian at the school bring it to her attention that this is a big deal, you know. Yeah. But to her, it's just like, this is what dad does. I mean, they're in my studio every day. And um, they watch me make the art. They pose for the books. And they do their thing. So I think when she gets a little bit older, she'll realize what a great opportunity this was for all of us, you know. Yeah. Wow, what a unique way. I mean, how what a I mean, how it's just so amazing that you're they get to think that this is how all kids grow up, right? Having this award-winning yeah, dad yeah. as a <laughs> you know, painting in the back of the house type of thing. That's amazing. So what are your hopes and dreams for this book? Oh, I, I dream that we all get together and really uh, analyze what our day and our world looks like today and how we got here and how we go forward. And and what do we need in our spirit and in our heart as we tackle all the issues that we all are grappling with? We are all, when we say we're in the same boat, the planet is in the same boat, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, we all need to walk and come together on it. And this is a wonderful way to understand where we came from as a, as a, as a species, uh, as, as the human race, and how we get to the next stop and the next position and how we get, get there together in a peaceful way. And we have all the testimony and all the examples that were laid before us on how to create a blueprint to get there. And so this book is a catalyst for our young folks to talk about the history, talk about these images that you see and what, where they came from and, and really create a wonderful conversation about, about history and our own history, not just black folks, not just white folks, but all of us. This is a this is universal right here, and I'm so so happy and pleased to be a part of a project like this. Oh, that's amazing! Well, you're so talented, and your illustrations just completely made this book. I mean, what it is, it's just amazing. So really, really powerful, and what a contribution! What is your next project? What do you have coming down the pike? Oh, Amy Charles and I. And we're going to do the follow-up to All Because You Matter. It's called We Are. And, oh, my goodness, I can't wait. I, I can't do it fast enough. <laughs> I mean, I've got to pace myself because I'm fighting at the bit. And also, I have a book that comes out in June that I both wrote and illustrated. And it's called uh, Music is a Rainbow. Oh. And I'm in that I'm sort of channeling the childhood of Quincy Jones and Maya Angelou. And I was inspired by a poem by Robert Frost. So all these, this is the most difficult project. I, I piled on the, the biggest problem that I could ever do to try to make this happen. And I think I made it through it. Amazing. So I'm so um, excited about that. Oh, I can't wait to see that. That sounds amazing. Wow. So what advice would you have for aspiring children's book authors or illustrators? The advice is to start right where you are at this very moment and 
figure out how to tell stories. Work If you're an artist and creator, hone your craft, work on your craft every single day and start jotting down your ideas and storytelling and develop a story. Develop your stories, you know. Don't think about trends that are happening out there. Tell your story. Tell your truth. And it'll be unique and it will be your voice and and nobody has a voice like you. So trust that. Love it. Wonderful. Well, Brian, thank you so much. Thanks for this amazing book. Thanks for chatting about it. And yeah, I can't wait to see what's next. Amazing. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Thank you for everything. We shall overcome. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music. 